With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West. Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. What's our story this time, Hoppy? This one we call Stampede at Samples Crossing. It started during a cattle drive with the Bar 20 pushing 2,000 head north for railroad shipment. We've been on the trail 15 days and have just reached Semples Crossing, where you always hold up overnight before fording the river. At the same time, another herd pulled in from the west, a herd much bigger than ours. We had both arrived at practically the same time, which meant trouble. And that night in the Silver Spur Saloon, trouble started. Here we go, Hoppy. Here comes Reb Moran. Breathing fire out of both ears. Yeah, sure enough. Hi, Reb. Here you're the new trail boss for the Lazy J. That's right, Cassidy. I'm the new trail boss. And I figure you and me ought to settle this thing about crossing the ford tomorrow. You mean about who goes first? <laughs> no question about that, is there? Bar 20 arrived first. Yeah, not so as anybody would notice it. I had a man waiting there an hour before your beef pulled in. A man doesn't count, Reb. It's who gets cattle there first. Not the way I figured, Cassidy. And you and I don't figure to like. I never expected we would. But I expect to put Lazy J beef into that river first thing tomorrow morning. You've had a few drinks too many, Reb. Sleep them off and we'll talk about it tomorrow. We'll talk about it right now. I'll tell you what I'll do, Cassidy. I'll fight you for it. <laughs> the best man gets to take his herd across first. But we fight with our hands, not with our irons. Look, Moran, tomorrow's going to be a big day for both of us. Why don't you head for your blanket roll and turn in? Oh, what's the matter, Cassidy? You scared? I always heard you was a fancy man with your fists. But with me, you got to prove it. Sorry, Moran, but I'm not going to take you on for a stupid reason like this. But you got to take me on, Cassidy. <laughs> you can't help yourself. No? And why not? You left just a couple of riders with your herd, didn't you? That's right. Well, I had some of my boys rope and hog tie them. You what? Yeah, and my boys are caring for that bar 20 beef right now. And if they hear three quick shots from out of this place, they know just what to do. Just what would they do, Reb? Stampede that herd of yours? Yeah. So it's up to you, Cassidy. Hmm. Either you fight me to see who crosses the river first, or you get them bar 20 steers scattered clear from here to the Continental Divide. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Stampede at Semple's Crossing. With the Bar 20 trail herd reaching an important river crossing almost at the same time as another herd, trouble has developed. Rev Moran, hard-drinking trail boss of the Lazy J, has just challenged Hoppy to a fist fight to decide which outfit will ford the stream first. Hoppy is trying to avoid the fight, but Moran has set things up so that Hoppy must fight or have his herd stampeded all over the countryside. Ah, this is kid stuff, Reb. You've just been promoted and it's gone to your head. You figure I've got a little reputation and you'd like to get fat off of it by knocking me around. Just kid stuff, Rip. Yeah, come on, Cassidy. Do you fight it or them steers of yours start running? All right. That's the way you have to play. But it's got to be just between you and me. <laughs> What's the matter, Cassidy? Your rider's all yellow, too. Who are you? I'm Gillis, Rip's foreman. And I'm willing to stack the lazy J against your outfit all the way. I'm sure you would considering you outnumber us at least two to one. I'll say this again, Reb. The fight has to be just between you and me, or I'm not taking off these guns. I don't figure your guns are so tough either, Cassidy. Let him make something out of it, Reb. With his guns, if he wants it. Now, now, hold it, hold it. Let's just keep it a fist fight. All right, Cassidy, it's just between me and you. 
So take off your guns. And whoever wins has the undisputed right to take his herd across the river first. That's also agreed, Reb? That's the whole idea, Cassidy. All right, I'll take off the guns. Hello, eh? Wouldn't want to make any bets on this, would you, Cassidy? No bets, Reb. You're forcing the fight on me, and that's enough. Hey, anybody else want to bet? Put your money where your mouth is, Moran. I got 50 bucks to back Hoppy. Yeah, I got $50 to bet on Hopper along Cassidy, too. I'll cover that. That's right, boys. Get your bets down. <laughs> it's going to be a big evening for the Lazy J. All right, come on, Cassidy. Get your hands up. Crowd them, Reb. Get them fast. Just what I aim to do. Try this one, Cassidy. Ought to be just your sight. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Ah. Not bad, Reb, but a little high. I felt it, though. And you're gonna feel this one. Oh! I felt that one, too, Reb. Right up to my wrist. Care to get up? And we can both try again. I'm getting up. And you're going down. It'll always be the same, Moran, even if you used an axe. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, can you hear me, Moran? Oh, gone. He's, he's colder than a panhandle winter. Uh, give me a hand, California. We'll get him up. Oh, I, I don't need any help. I'll be all right. Uh, I guess this settles things, doesn't it, Reb? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it settles things. Your outfit crosses the river first. Now I'm getting out of here. <laughs> Nobody would ever know you'd been in a scuffle, Hoppy. You don't show a mark. <laughs> it's a, a great fight, Mr. Cassidy. Won me $50. Uh, my name is Clark, Mr. Cassidy. Tippy Clark. Uh, and I sure am proud to know you. Wait a minute. If this is the first you've known me, how did you happen to bet on me? Because he's a white-livered stable tramp, and we ought to hang him upside down the doorway. Now, wait a minute, Pharaoh. I, I didn't do anything to you. You better get this, and I'm going to... Oh, no, no, no. Don't follow him, Pharaoh. Let him alone. You don't think you're going to walk out of here top dog, do you, Cassidy? Nobody ever beats the Lazy J for keeps. And there's 12 of us here to prove it. 12 of them. Five of us from the bar 20. That calls for more than the rabbits, fool. Move in, boys. We're going to clean out this place. Hold you, man. Hold it. Hold it, I said. This is a 45 I'm holding, and I'm pretty good with it. And the man alongside me is a lot better with his. Maybe all you gents don't know him. His name is Silent Jim Reed, and he happens to be marshal of this town. And I happen to be his deputy. You ought to know better than to make trouble, Pharaoh. You used to live here. I figure this to be our own fight, Gleason. That's all right, so long as it's just a couple of you. But when it comes to wrecking buildings with one of your range brawls, well, that's where we take over. We're taking you in, Pharaoh. Oh, you are? Yeah, you and this Cassidy. And maybe we'll have peace in town tonight. That's all right with me, Deputy. Head for the door, Pharaoh. My outfit ain't gonna take this, Gleason. Your outfit will take it and like it. I won't like it. I'm not gonna have this town turned upside down just because you fellas lost the fight and a few bets. That's what you think. Push that door open, Cassidy. After you, Marshal. All right. Now you, Pharaoh. And don't try... They come from across the street. Poppy, you hit. I got a slug through the arm. Outside of that, I'm all right. But the town marshal wasn't so lucky. Looks as though he's dying. Got it out yet, Doc? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's out. You sure can take it, Cassidy. 38 slug could be mighty painful. I'm uh, much obliged to you, Doctor. Will it be all right if I get down off this bar now? Oh, you better lie still a few more minutes, Cassidy. You're going to be a lot weaker than you think. Oh? Oh, yes, Tippy. What is it? Uh, the Marshal's Silent Jim. He, he, he's still lying out there. Yeah, and well, he's dead, Tippy. Lying out there isn't going to hurt him now. He didn't die right away, though. No, it took him about 20 minutes. Oh, sure, a tough way to go. If a man can't die in bed, it... It seems like somebody ought to get his boots off for him. Why didn't somebody get the marshal's boots off? Why don't you go get them off, Tippy? Stuff the toes good and they just about be your size. Well, did you see anyone fire those shots as you stepped outside, Cassidy? Sorry, Gleason. It was pretty dark out there. Yeah, but don't take a mind reader to figure who was on the other end of that gun. What are you thinking, Gleason? 
Well, Cassidy, you whip that fire-eating trail boss of the Lazy J here tonight, Reb Moran. Moran was out of this place when the shooting happened. So that's who you think it was? Yep. I figured he couldn't take the whipping and stood out there waiting for you to show. Probably so riled up that he just let fire at everybody who stepped through the doorway. All right, Gleason, but what are you going to do about it? Well, Doc, I guess we'll have to try to bring Moran in. That might be quite a job. With Silent Jim gone, things around Semple's Crossing are liable to get pretty rough. <clears throat> Nothing like sleeping in a hotel for a good night's rest. <laughs> uh, how's the arm feel this morning, Hoppy? Uh, it's kind of stiff. I guess I'll be able to get around all right. Were you going to swim them steers across that stream this morning or this afternoon? Uh, I'll get it. Oh, it's you, Doc. Uh, come on in. Yeah, thought I'd better stop by and have another look at that arm of yours, Cassidy. Doesn't feel too bad, Doc. Yeah, just the same. I better dress it for you. I don't expect to take them cattle yours away from here. Oh, maybe not for several days. I've been thinking about Reb Moran. He's a fire eater, and he likes nothing better than a brawl. I find it hard to believe he'd bushwhack anybody from a dark doorway. Oh? After what happened last night, I'd sort of feel responsible if he had to hang for a killing he didn't do. Yeah, well, it'd be a lot better for that arm if you could rest a few days. Mind if I throw up this window shade and need more light to dress that wall? Go ahead. Huh, look at that sun beating down out there. And it's six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, is that what time it is? I wouldn't know. Hunt with another shooting and a knifing and breaking the news of Silent Jim Reed's death to his widow. I've been up all night. Never can tell, can you, Doc? Yeah. There probably wasn't a bad man in this territory who couldn't beat Silent Jim in a fair fight. And then Silent Jim has to get it by accident. Yeah. And I'm afraid that when Silent Jim was killed, there went the law and order in this town. Ben Gleason been a good deputy, but he's not the one for handling the trouble we get here. Oh, that... Hurt, Cassidy? Ah, a little, but don't worry about it. Sure is going to be a hot day. You can see the heat coming up from the ground right now. Uh, uh, there's a couple of little kids playing out in the street already, too. Uh, Doc, uh, how about Reb Moran? Uh, anybody know where he is? No sign of him, Tom. Gleason rounded up posse, went out to find him and bring him in. That might be a rough job against all those lazy J riders. Yeah, that's what I told Gleason. So he rounded up his posse without too much fuss and got out of here in the dark, just after three o'clock. He didn't lose much time. Uh, figured most of the lazy J hands might still be hanging around the saloon. I hope it works out that way. I feel I've had enough bloodshed around here for one twenty-four hours. Hey, now, how does that feel, Cassidy? Ah, uh, feels fine, Doc. It's nice and snug. Hey, what's that noise? Sounds like an earthquake. Well, wait a second. I'll, I'll get this window up. It's coming from the river crossing. Hoppy, it's them steers of ours stampeding. And they're coming this way right through town with them little kids in the street. <laughs> Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Stampede at Semple's Crossing. Trouble has broken out at Semple's Crossing. Hoppy has won the fight forced upon him by Reb Moran, trail boss of the Lazy J, to determine who should ford the river first. But as an aftermath, silent Jim Reed, marshal of Semple's Crossing, is killed by gunfire. With suspicion and tension riding the area, someone has stampeded the Bar 20 steers right into the main street of town. Them kids, Hoppy. They're too scared to get out of the way. You grab one, I'll take the other. Come on. Go, go. There was... Hey, Hoppy, where are you? He fell, California. I saw a ball right in front of them steers. Uh, hell, where? Where? The just I can't see nothing. Trying to pick up that kid. Here, take the gun. I gotta know what happened. Hey, doggone Jessica. Hoppy! Hoppy! Where are you? Right here, California. You all right? Yeah, yes, sure. I'm how come I I'm kind of scared petrified, I'm all right. But you, you 
Did you fell down? Yeah, the arm went back on me when I was lifting the youngster. We got out of the way, both of us. Ooh, what a scramble that was. And them tears of ours, Hoppy. Scattered all over the countryside. Take us a week to round them up. Ah, uh, never mind. Those two kids are all right anyway. Uh, but what about the herd? We ain't gonna take it lying down, are we? Not if we can find out who did it. That lazy J outfit did it. Ah, uh, maybe. But that's something for us to find out for sure. like you're in a hurry, Gleason. Who's that? Oh, it's you, Cassidy. Yeah, couldn't sleep, so I'm out here trying to catch a little breeze. <clears throat> How's the arm? Uh, it doesn't like what happened. Keeps letting me know it. A lot of pain, the wound like that. Just brought Reb Moran in, me and the posse. Yeah, where'd you find him? Oh, we looked all day for him and then found him on our way back to town, still sleeping off his drunk under his... Spring wagon. Hmm. No trouble taking him. Didn't act like he knew what it was all about. Do you think he's guilty, Gleason? Oh, who knows? I'm never sure when a man's guilty. Not unless I see him do something. Of course, a lot of other people around here think he's guilty, though. Want to give him a quick trial, a quick sentence. Uh, where are all your boys, Cassidy? Out rounding up cattle. We had a stampede here today. Yeah, I heard. You think Moran might have caused that, too? Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know anything about all this. But we came on to something funny out there today. Yeah, what was that? A couple of steers wearing new Red Hot brands. Yeah? Mm-hmm. A real new brand for these parts. A Lazy Bee. Lazy Bee? Hey, you could dress up a Lazy J to look like that without any trouble at all. That's right. That's the way I figured. Without any trouble at all. Uh, you feel like talking to Reb Moran, Cassidy? I wouldn't mind. Come on, then. I got him where he's got more time for talk than anything else. Got to hop along, Casty here, Moran. Says he'd like to talk to you. He thinks I try to gun him down. We got nothing to talk about. I'm not passing judgment on you, Reb. I'd never gun a man down that way if I was drunk or sober. You whipped me fair and square, and that was enough for me. How about stampeding my cattle, Reb? What? Don't know nothing about that either. You said you're going to. Said I was going to if, if you wouldn't fight. Anyway, a man says lots of things when he's lickered up. Don't mean he's going to do them. Well, lots of folks around here think it's a gun down silent Jim Reed, Rip. They think you tried for Cassidy and got the marshal instead. Not me. I might have had a few drinks. I'd never pull anything like that. Folks are going to put you on trial for it just the same. Well, how can they prove it? Somebody have to see me do a thing like that to prove it. Well, you better pray that nobody says they did see you. Because if somebody does that, you're going to hang. Hang? That's right. Me? Yep. Come on, Cassidy. Time we got out of here. No, wait wait a minute, Cassidy. Wait a minute. You, you ain't going to let him do that to me, are you? You know me from way back in Laredo. You know I wouldn't dry gulch anybody. You know that, don't you, Cassidy? Yeah, Reb, I guess I do know it. And if I can, I'll help you. Cassidy, if I was you, I'd uh, forget what you said about trying to help Moran. Why? Well, there's some folks in this town that wouldn't like it. They're mighty tough folks. People that could cause you all kinds of trouble. Gleason, I think you're being honest about this trouble. I think you're being honest because you told me that stuff about the brands. But when it comes to Reb Moran, I'm not taking your advice. See you later. Mr. Cassidy. Who is it? It's me, Tippy Clark. What do you want, Tippy? I think there's going to be more trouble in this town, Mr. Cassidy. I, I get around and I hear things, and I think there's going to be more trouble. Maybe with men lying in the street and dying with their boots on. I've seen a lot of it here, and I always get to thinking it could be me. Well, you don't have to look at them, Tippy. Well, I guess I can't help looking, I, and I guess I can't... What's the matter, Tippy? I thought I saw something in the shadow there. Something. Uh, Mr. Cassidy! Uh, that's 
better? Uh, how's your head feel? No, I don't know. Pick it up and hand it to me, will you? Oh, no kidding, though. Well, how do you feel? Oh, I'm all right, California. Where did you come from? I uh, got here just after them fellas jumped you. They vamoosed when I started a shooting at them. Where's Tippy? I don't know. If he was with you, he ain't around now. Uh, now, listen. Uh, before we do any more gabbing, we better get you over to the dock's place. That gash under your eye needs some help. Come on, I'll help you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cassidy, what are you doing here? Oh, it's you, Gleason. I came over to have my face patched up. Yeah? Well, looks like you'll have to wait your turn. Tippy Clark's in there. Tippy? Doc says he's dying of a slug through the chest. Sent for me to take a statement from him. Come on in. You two can be witnesses. Yeah. Tippy. Come Mr. Cassidy. Let her stay by the door, Cassidy. He needs air. Farrell Gillis. How do you fit in this picture? I'm the one who carried Tippy over here. That's how I fit in. Hold him up a little higher, Pharaoh. He'll <coughs> cough his life out before he can say two words. Gleason, you better get your statement in a hurry. This man is dying. All right, Doc. What do you want to say, Tippy? I, uh, I want to say I know who killed Silent Jim Reed and shot Mr. Cassidy last night. I, uh, I saw what happened when I went outside. It, it was... Reb Moran, he was standing in the doorway across the street. Lift me up a little higher, Pharaoh. One of my spurs is caught in the couch. Is that all you got to say, Tippy? That, that's all, Mr. Gleason. No, I guess that settles our case, then. I'll get the judge to bring Moran to trial in the morning. Before you go, Gleason, I'd like to ask a question. What? I'd like to know how you'd go about rustling an entire herd of 5,000 cattle. How I... What are you talking about, Cassidy? I've decided that the surest way of doing it would be to wait until it was being moved to market, far away from its home ranch. Then it wouldn't be too hard if the trail boss was moved out of the way. And if the foreman and maybe half the men were in cahoots. Wait a minute, Cassidy. Now you're talking about me. That's right, Pharaoh. But I'm not talking about you alone. Am I, Dr. Bradhurst? What do you mean, Cassidy? I mean you're the brains behind all this. And that's why you wanted silent Jim Reed out of the way. Because you knew he might be too smart for what you were trying to do. So you killed silent Jim and tied it to Reb Moran. Oh, Hoppy, and that's why they stampeded our beef. To keep you out of the picture, huh? You sure you ain't making a big mistake, Cassidy? Doc Bradhurst? Doc Bradhurst and his Lazy Bee brand. His new and very personal brand. But Cassidy, 5,000 heads. Oh, they might not have taken all of them. They'd have left maybe five or six hundred. Blamed the big loss on trouble here and on the trail. It was quite a plan, Doctor. But you're not going to be able to make it stick. You can't prove any of this, Cassidy. I can prove you said Tippy Clark was dying when he wasn't. And if we can find that branding iron of yours, maybe by searching this Shut house... Up, Cassidy! One more word in this 45. Put your light out. You too, Gleason. Don't make a move. Afraid you made a mistake with that move, Pharaoh. Now, Tippy's going to be able to talk. Aren't you, Tippy? Yes. They wanted to be sure Reb Moran would be convicted. Shut up, you! Don't mind him, Tippy. He has to keep the gun on us. So they made me say I saw Reb Moran kill Son of Jim. Pharaoh kept holding a knife against my back all the time. If I'd have said a wrong word, I I was going to get it. Looks as though you're going to have to use that gun on him, Pharaoh. Yeah. And I'm going to start in with this squawking little polecat. Now, back to Hop Along Cassidy. This town. If it ain't dust, it's gun smoke. You all right, California? You Gleason? No, well, we're all right, but Pharaoh's down, and the doc's got a handle will never be the same. I'll never know how you beat Pharaoh's bullets, Cassidy, and I'll never know how you drew that fast. Banged up the way you are. I guess I got tired of being banged up. These two are all yours now, Gleason. And I'll let them change places with Reb Moran. But uh, first, I'd like to know how you figured out this play the Doc was making. I'd like to know that myself, Hoppy. How are we so sure the Doc was lying about Tippy? Well, according to the doctor, Tippy was supposed to be making a deathbed statement. But the minute I saw Tippy on that couch, I knew he couldn't be dying. No? Well, why not? Tippy was conscious and able to speak. And Tippy was wearing his boots. That was why I knew the Doc was lying. 
Tippy had known he was going to die, he certainly would have asked one of us to take his boots off. Because Tippy has more fear of dying with his boots on than any man I ever met. I'll be a low-coat sidewinder. This is one story we can all get a boot out of. California. I mean it. Uh, the Doc and Farrow figured to make quite a killing. But they come to find out that the boot was on the other foot. And the boot hurt, didn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> The old adage that he died with his boots on surely tripped up the guilty ones in this Hoppy adventure. There's one thing certain when you follow the adventures of Hoppy and his pal California. Plenty of action and excitement every time. So don't miss Hopalong Cassidy's next action-packed story. Hoppy and California mix it up plenty, and that's a promise. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Sam Peter Semple's Crossing was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. Mm-hmm.